Identifying Functions of Mapping Diagrams, Lesson 6.1b. A function is an input-output relationship that has exactly one output for each input. The value, the amount, that is put into a function is the input. The result is the output. When one input value is paired with one output value, the relationship is a function. So for those that need a little extra explanation, a function is a set of ordered pairs in which each value of the first component x corresponds to exactly one value of the second component y. If we're washing clothes at a laundromat, the relationship between the number of loads, the input, and the cost, the output, is a function. A mapping diagram, sometimes called an arrow diagram, can be used to represent a relationship between input values and output values. A mapping diagram represents a function if each input value is paired with only one output value. So, here's a function. This is not a function. Let's see why that's a function. We have one input, it's the number one, and it's got an arrow going to the four. Here we have an input 4 that's going to 12, and here we have a 6 that's going to 10. Since each input is paired with only one output, this is a function. So this is not a function. We have the 1 going to the 4, but then the 4 is going to both the 10 and the 12. Since 4 is paired with 10 and 12, this is not a function. can only have one arrow coming out of the input. Now let's take a look at these two. Here we have a function. This is our input. This is our output. Let's take a look at the input numbers. 3 has one arrow going to the 15. 7 has one arrow going to the 8. 9 has one arrow going to the 13. Since each input is paired with one output, this is a function. Now, this is not a function. Look at the input. The 3 is paired with three outputs. Since 3 is paired with 8, 13, and 15, this is not a function. It only can have one arrow coming out of the input. To be a function, each input can only be paired with one output. Each input value is only allowed to send one arrow. Here they are sending one arrow from each input, and here this input is sending three arrows. That's not a function. Now let's look at these. Here we have a function. We have our input and our output. And if we look at our input, the 1 is sending one arrow, the 2 is sending one arrow, and the 3 is sending one arrow. Each input is only sending one arrow. They're all going to the 5 for the output, but that's okay because they're each sending one arrow. Since each input has one arrow pointing to an output value, this is a function. Now look at this one. We have our input and our output. Uh-oh, this one is sending out two arrows, so that's not a function. An input cannot have arrows to two output numbers. This is not a function. Each input value is only allowed to send one arrow. So let's see how well we understand. It's telling us to label each as a function or not a function. And I have labels here that we can move underneath each one. So let's take a look at this first one. We have 1 being sent to 8, 2 being sent to 8, 3 being sent to 6, and 4 being sent to 6. Well, it looks like the input values are only sending one arrow. So this would be a function. They're allowed to send one arrow to the output. Now let's take a look at this one. 6 isn't being sent anywhere. 7 is being sent to 16, but 8 is being sent to both 12 and 14. 8 has two arrows coming out of it. Do you remember the rule? Each input value is only allowed to send one arrow, and that 8 is sending two arrows. That is not a function. Now let's take a look at this one. The 2 
is being sent to three with one arrow. The four is being sent to the two with one arrow. And the six is being sent to the one with one arrow. Each input only has one arrow coming out of it. That is a function. Does that make sense? Do you get it now? As you move forward in algebra, you are going to be dealing more often with functions. So I wanted to show you something. This is looking ahead to Algebra 1. The function can be represented by an F, usually written in italics. You might see it written like this, real fancy. We have our input, that's our X value. It's also called the domain, and it's the independent variable. The output, that's our Y value, that's called the range, or the codomain, and it's the dependent variable. And we can use function notation. It's when you see the F with an X inside parentheses and then an equal sign and then the rest of the equation. This would be read as the function of X is 3X. And you're going to see this. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as F of X instead of function of X. Now, I know this may be above some of you, but that's okay. I'm just trying to give you a taste of it so that when you do see it next year or the year after, you're going to say, oh, wait, I think I remember that. The words input and output describe what's happening in the function as what number we put in and what result comes out. This would be read as the function of x, or the f of x, is x squared plus 2x. It's like saying y is equal to x squared plus 2x. This takes the place of y. It's the output. Hopefully when you see equations like this next year, you're going to say, I remember that. It's not so scary. Okay, we finished the second part. We're going to move on to 6.1c, identifying functions from tables. Just remember, when you're coming out of the input value, each input value is only allowed one arrow each, okay? Have a great day, and join me for the third part of the lesson. Bye.